Good morning or good afternoon, whatever time you're watching this. We are getting ready to start week five, project four. We're going to be doing the candy packaging. I'm so excited for this. This is also another new project we're going to be doing. So we're going to be on project four, the candy packaging here, and we're going to go ahead and get started on that. So I'm going to move this over here and I'm going to move the AI file over here and we will get started. So first things first, I'm gonna open up this file here and it's gonna tell us that we need to go to the candy. We're gonna unzip it or extract all. And we're gonna create a new file by opening the squarebox.ai or yeah, AIT. So double click on that to open it up. We're going to open it up with Illustrator. And here we go. So I'm going to max it out so we can see it on the screen. We're going to say view the artboard to window so we can see it better. We're going to open up our layers here and we can see them all here. We're going to create a new layer. We're going to double click on the name of it and we're going to name it background. Hit enter. We're going to drag the background below the die cut. But this one's still selected. We're going to go to file place. We're going to go back to our folders, which mine is on my desktop. I don't know where you guys put yours. Candy. And we're going to open up the background TIFF file. We're going to make sure that none of these options are clicked down here. Make sure that none of them are clicked. And we're going to say place. Notice that it's preloaded onto my cursor. So as I move my cursor around, the image is moving along with it. We're just going to put it on here. I just need it to be on the page. I want it to go across all four panels here, but I don't want it to go into this top panel. So as long as it's on these four panels here, but not in the top panel, we're going to be okay. So like right about here. In fact, let's go ahead and we're going to go up here and do the top left. And I'm going to go ahead and change it so we know exactly where it's at. I put my reference point at the top left. I'm going to change my X to zero and my Y to five. And that should put it exactly where I want it. Now I'm going to go over here and I'm going to click on the I button on all of them because I only want to see the background layer. And the image is still selected. And then up here, we're going to do the image trace button. Notice how it does this like weird black and white piece. It's automatically going to default to a black and white preset when we trace the image. And of course, the original photo is hidden and the illustrated photo is going to kind of pop up in front of it. And that's okay. That's what we want. We're going to go to window. We're going to click on the image trace tool again, and you'll see that this pops up now. We're going to go over here to the preset. We're going to open up preset and we're going to choose low fidelity photo. It's going to maybe take a minute and it's going to kind of make some changes for you. And it's going to tell you about the colors. It should be something around 1050. Mine, I think is like 1051 colors right here. That's kind of where you want it to be. And then the palette menu, we're going to go to limited. It's going to do some more settings and it's going to bump it down to 30. Notice how it's changing down a little bit. And then here, if you click the pre, un, unclick the preview option, and then we're going to go over here where the arrow is on the left, and we're going to click on that, and you notice that everything drops down. So we're going to change our paths to 75. We're going to change our corners to 25. And let's change our noise to five points. Now let's check our preview again and kind of see what it's going to do. Notice that it starts progressing again and you see some minor changes that are happening over here. So in our view menu, 
we're going to do tracing results with outlines. Notice how it's changed. And then we're going to change it again to tracing results. So you see how kind of the difference is? And then if you click the I view button here, notice how it was originally versus how it is now. It kind of gives you an idea of what it looked like before versus now. All right. So we can just kind of move this over and we're going to control S to save this file. Save it on the computer, save it however you want. We're going to go ahead and push it into our work in progress file. We're going to create a new file folder, project four. Don't ever stop <laughs> working on this. And I'm just going to put my last name, Candy, and say save. And just say OK. I'm going to go ahead and exit that box out. I'm going to deselect everything so nothing is selected. I'm going to go back over here. I'm going to click the swatch panel. And then over here, I'm going to get the eyedropper tool. And right here where I see that really dark red color, I'm going to click on it. Like right here. That might be a little too dark. There we go. So with that being up here in the fill area, we're going to go right here and click new swatch. It's going to pop up this box. We're going to make sure that our global box is activated with the check mark. Now, if something should happen and you see a box that says something about add to my library, don't add to the library. Just leave that unchecked. And we're going to say OK. And now you see that the red has been added. Now we're going to take the eyedropper tool again and we're going to pick a medium pink color. It's like this right here. We're going to do the same thing again. Say OK. And then we're going to do the same thing again, but with a medium yellow color. We're going to check mark this or check the swatch piece. Say OK. And then we're going to control S to save it. All right, so go back to the layers panel. I'm going to create two new layers right above the background layer. And I'm going to change them to say layer or side one. Side two, and I'm going to make side one the active side or the active layer for now. So I'm going to click on it to make it active. And I'm going to create a rectangle, rectangle, that's not a word today, a rectangle in the center of the left panel. So I'm going to go ahead and turn these back on. So I'm going to go to the rectangle tool and I'm going to make a rectangle that is 3.7 inch wide and one inch high. So 3.7, that's close. So it's about that. And then I'm going to go over here and fix it. I'm going to unlink it. So 3.75 with the height of one inch with the custom red swatch. So I'm going to change it to be Red. All right. And the stroke needs to stay at none. And I'm going to go back to my selection tool. And based on what I'm looking at, I need to bring it about there. And then it says add an anchor point tool. So I'm going to add an anchor point tool. So if I need to add an anchor point tool, that would be getting the pen tool, putting a point right there, double clicking on it, and bringing it in a little bit to make it look a little bit like a flag. Something kind of like that right there. You double click on it to make it look like the banner right here. Okay, this part here is really tricky. So we're going to go over here, we're going to right click, click the reflect tool, make sure that we Click on the right edge so that the target is moved here. Whoops. Remember, if you make a mistake, just control Z. Now, this is where it's going to get really tricky. You need to hit the Alt and Shift button together. If you are on a Mac computer, you're just going to hit the Option button. 
but for PC users, you're going to hold down the shift and the alt button together. Now, while you're still holding them, you're going to click on the mouse, hold it down, and drag it. But you got to make sure that piece is not connected. See how it does kind of wonky? So you might have to practice this for a minute. So you're not holding that down. You're going to hit the shift and the alt button. So once you know that's in the right spot and your mouse has changed back to the mouse piece, you're going to hit the Alt and the Shift button. Now you see your mouse is two mouses. You're going to click your mouse while you're still holding those two buttons down, your Alt and your Shift button, and you're going to drag to the right. And you'll see that it's duplicated and reflected it, and then you can let go. That is what you need it to do right here. Do you see how it's doing that? Okay. In the Layers panel, we are going to expand this. We're going to drag this one down to slide two. And then we're going to expand slide two, side two. So you're dragging this particular piece down to side two. We're going to click back on side one as our active panel, our active layer. We're going to grab the type tool here. Now you want to create, so if you do it like a circle, you don't want that. You don't want it on a path. So you're going to want to put it somewhere like right here. And we're going to type in smart. We're going to format that, so we're going to double click it. We're going to change the font to ATC Garnet. I need to stop filtering. I was filtering the other day, sorry. ATC Garnet Ultra. And then the size is going to be 60 point with a white fill and it's on the right paragraph alignment. Okay. So now I can grab this and I'm going to move it here. So it's going to look like this here. So while we have the type object selected, we're going to click on edit, copy, we're going to click on the side two layer to make it the active layer. And we're going to hit on edit paste. Whoops, sorry. Let me go back. Edit, no, side two, edit, paste, and place. Now what it's doing is it's putting right, it, it's putting it right on top of the layer side one but it's going to put it on the side two layer. Does that make any sense? Probably not, but just follow along with me. We'll get there. Now this one, we're going to change to left alignment and you see those kind of moved over and we're going to change this one to say hearts. And we're going to make this one using the selection tool. We're going to make this one an eighth from the left edge of the side two, which means it's going to be about somewhere about here. I'm not crazy about this spotting right here, so I'm gonna kern it a little bit if I can. It's not one to work with me today. There we go. Make those two a little bit closer. They're a little too far apart for my liking. It'll get there. Now here, that was not what I meant to do. Backspace, I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna place an insertion point at the end of the second type. So I'm probably, yeah, I'll probably just do um, window type, which will have to go down and glyphs. And then I'm going to find TM. And to get it up there, you're gonna have to double click it. And close that out. Now for this one, I'm gonna double click it so I can change some things. I'm gonna change it to the size of 40. And then I'm going to have to change some other things. So I'm going to go ahead and open up this here. 
My computer's wanting to move a little slower today. For the baseline shift, I need to change that to 10. And the reason being is, you know how like that was a little too high, I actually need to move it down a little bit to about and over. And it's not supposed to be black, it should be white. All right, that is starting to look good. All right, so on the one, I'm gonna click, I'm gonna click on the empty space to the right side of layer one right here. And that's gonna select all the objects there in layer one. I'm gonna go to object and I'm gonna say group. Now I'm gonna go to two, I'm gonna do the same thing there and I'm gonna go back to object and I'm gonna say group. I'm gonna say control S. So I'm gonna select side one now, click on that. I'm gonna to go to effects and I'm gonna make a warp. I'm gonna make it warped now. I'm gonna to go to warp and I'm gonna say arch. Notice how it automatically arches for me. Kind of brings up this dialog so I can make some changes if I want to. So I'm gonna go here to the style and I'm gonna choose arch. And I'm gonna change the bend to about 32. I think is what the book tells us, but I'm actually gonna bring it to a negative 32. You know what, I'm just gonna type it in. That'll be easier. <laughs> So negative 32, and I'm gonna say, okay. See how it warps it down? And I'm gonna say Control S to save it. Another thing we can do is we're gonna do a 3D effect. And over here, I'm gonna hide everything but this side one for now. I only wanna see this little piece here because this is all I'm working on. Got my selection tool on. I'm going to make sure that this is selected. I'm going to go to window and now I'm going to do 3D and materials. And then at the top, I have this option or this object to select from. And I'm going to click the extrude option. And notice how it kind of brings it out like it's a box and it's coming out towards me a little bit. I'm going to change that depth to say. 0.7. Now one really cool thing about the 3D piece, and I'm going to bring this over so you can see it, you have this like rotate freeform piece. If I click on this and I move it around, notice how I can kind of see it at all the different angles. So you do have that flexibility as well. So you could look at it and kind of see how you might want to lay it out. So if we're done kind of playing with it and I'm not really sure how I wanted it to be set up, I can go back in here and do a custom setting. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and do the X axis at 20 degrees, the Y axis at zero and the X axis at zero as well. And then I can also change the lighting so that it lights a certain way. And then this is kind of cool too, because if you go up here to the top, you can see how the shadowing might be. You have the standard, you have a top left or right, a diffused type setting. Um, which is really cool. So with the standard lighting set, I'm gonna choose that one. I'm gonna scroll down here and I'm gonna change the intensity to 90. And then I'm gonna put the ambient lighting down here, um, the intensity to 100. And notice how it's changed. So we can close that one out. We're gonna to go to windows and click open appearance here and now you can see kind of what all we have done to it and this tells us what all we've applied so now in the layers menu we're going to go over here we're going to click on the slide two or side two sorry click on side two we got to make it viewable though we're gonna unsee that one for a second actually we can go ahead and still look at it and see the difference between the two so what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on side two, hit the Alt button, and then click on the target button here for side two. Actually, sorry. So for this one, for this one, for side two, we're gonna click on side two. We're gonna click on the target button for side one, drag it down to side two, so for here, you see the difference between the two. If we were to go up here and hit the Alt button, 
click on the target button for the side one group here, as you can see here. Click on it while you're holding the Alt button and drag it down to the target button on side two group. Notice how it fixes it to match. And then when you go to your Windows appearance, notice how now your side two has the same exact effects. So if you go to your appearance in side two, it has the same effects that your side one has. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to make a little bit of changes though. So we're going to slick select side two. We're going to go to the appearance and we're going to click on the warp dialog to open up that applied effect. But we're going to change this bin from that negative 32 to a positive 32. And we're going to say, or we're going to actually tab. Don't say anything, just tab. And say, okay. Notice that when we're looking at it, see there's a little bit of a disconnect here. So what we can do is we can kind of play with it and see exactly where that disconnect is with our arrow keys and fix it. Notice that now with my arrow keys, I can move the boxes up and down to make it look smoother. See how now they're connected? Now it looks like one smooth thing just using my arrow keys to nudge the banner group up and down until the two objects are aligning to each other. So once you do that, hit control S to save it. Once you control save it, we're gonna open up the layers panel. We're gonna click on everything minus the background layer. We wanna view all of it with the exception of the background layer. We're gonna go ahead and lock group one or slide one and side two and just make it easier on us. I'm gonna bump those back down. Now that side one is active, I'm gonna go over here to the pen tool and I'm gonna draw a curve that follows, I take that back, don't lock side one. So, okay. So we're gonna lock the groups on side one and side two don't lock the actual sides. So now I'm gonna take my pen tool and I'm gonna draw a line that goes along here. Once you're done, you just hit escape. It'll disconnect your line. And of course, we don't need a white fill. We need some kind of line so we can see what we did but we don't want it to be filled. So we're gonna hit the no fill. We wanna see kind of what our line did. Whoop, escape, because I don't need that. We're gonna delete that point right there. But what I'm gonna do, just so I can see what I'm doing, I'm gonna zoom in here and realize that my pen tool was not so butamous. I'm gonna go over here with my selection tool. I'm gonna grab this. I'm gonna do some edits. My escape. It's okay for it not to be absolutely beautiful. You can fix it. That's the best part here is you can fix it. See how beautiful that line is starting to be now? It's that simple, people. You can make it as beautiful as you need to. If it keeps trying to make you connect the line, just hit the escape button. Because it keeps trying to make me connect lines. And we're not here to connect lines today. All right. So see how my line is kind of coming back a little bit better now? Woo, that's Budimus. But I do want to fix that part right here. Because I think I went too far out. So I'm going to stop it right there. Escape. So we're going to go to the eraser tool and double click on it like it told us to. In the size field, I'm going to change it to eight and say, okay. Right here is telling me to erase it between the first and second panel. So I'm just going to click on it right there with the selection tool. I'm just going to click off of them because that's what it's telling me to do. 
My line's looking a little wonky on here, but every time I go to fix it, it's telling me that it's fine. Oh, there it is. Okay, hold on. Let me fix that, because we're not doing some jumped up lines. Not about that life. Okay. I don't know why I did that, like, random line over there. So, I don't like jerky lines. We don't do jerky lines. We're professionals. We're going to select now the right side. So, we're selecting this one. Oh. So we're grabbing this selected piece here and we're dragging it down to side two because that's going to go with side two art. Now we're going to go back to our type tool panel, click on it, type tool. And on the left side here, we're going to go near the end, on the left end. Notice how my typing tool has now turned into what looks like a little arrow thing. See how it's just a little box, but now it's turned into like a little path across my typing tool and you see the word path? That's gonna write something across the path here. And we're gonna write a sweet, fruity, which disappeared on me. That's okay, because we're gonna change it. So we're changing our font type to, well, hold on, let's do this. We're going to ATC Coral, normal, with a font of 24. The baseline shift, I'm gonna have to open this back up. Baseline shift of zero, alignment to the right. Nope, that's left, to the right. <laughs> Let me put that back down to zero. Fill color needs to be that dark red. Okay, so that one's done. I'm gonna hit the control button click off of that. Now I'm going to go back over here without the control button click. I'm going to click on this path and I'm going to type in with a sour zip exclamation. I'm going to change this one to a left and then I'm going to change the fill color to that red as well. With the direct selection tool now selected, I'm going to, so you have, okay, so here you have the start bar, the center bar, and the end bar. So I'm gonna grab this start bar here, and I'm gonna to go to I'm about one eighth of an inch from the left panel, which is about here, yeah. All right, so now I'm gonna unlock both groups and then I'm gonna turn on the background. All right, and then now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to I'm going to lock the background. Now what I'm going to do is go to select all and I'm going to move them up until you can't be distracted by the background with the words being in the way. You know what I'm saying? Like that. But I need to be careful because I still need to be able to see it on the box. So something like that should be okay. All right, so now we're going to collapse side one, collapse side two, and they are done. And we're going to lock them so they don't get messed up. And then we're going to control S and save. Now we're going to create a new side and call it side three. Everything is locked but that side three. This is going to be that third panel right here, the side three right here. Using the rectangle tool, we're going to fill it completely white with no stroke. So we're going to change this to a white box. And from this corner up here, following the blue guides, all the way down to this corner here, we're going to put in a white box. There you go. And then we're going to say file place. Go back to the candy file, box copy, all of this information. We're going to say, oh, we're going to say place. All of this is fine. We'll say okay. And we're going to click about here and drag to about here to create a space for all that information to be in. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna select all that text and we're gonna change the font to 12.5 and we're gonna change it to ATC Coral with a 17 point leap. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back over here, we're gonna do place and we're gonna select the 75 anniversary and this one, 
we're going to make sure that link is not selected and we're going to make sure that show import options is selected and now we're going to kick select place we want to make sure that show preview is selected here we want to make sure that the convert layers to objects is an option that is selected and then we're going to say okay we're going to place it somewhere over here we got to kind of see where it's going to fall and we're going to move it till it's fitting to about something like that and we want to leave about one eighth of a width on either side of the seven and of the little diamond looking pieces so something along those lines there we're going to choose objects while it's still selected text wrap and make and then we're going to do it again we're going to say object text wrap options and we're going to change it to um, 12 points and click OK. And then what we might need to do here is just kind of nudge things around <laughs> until it kind of does what we need it to do so that words aren't kind of looking a little weird. And then another thing that I like to do is I'll double click the font and then I'll go over here to paragraph and unhyphenate them because I don't like words that are hyphenated. And then now you can say that it's done. So control S to save. We're going to select on the seven. When you double click on it, it'll only, it'll let you select only the seven. You'll see that everything else kind of fades. So now we're going to choose effect, stylize, and drop shadow. And we're going to change some things in the preview box because you notice everything kind of falls in here. So we're going to leave it at multiply. We're going to do the opacity at 50, the offset at 0 .02, 0 0.02, and we're going to change the blur to be 0.03. And of course, the color, color can stay at black. And we're going to say OK. Then we're going to go to Windows. We're going to open Appearance. And now we're going to select on the Five. We're going to go kind of do something very similar. We're going to go to apply drop shadow. So everything we had already done for the seven, we're now doing to the five. But now for the five, what we're going to do is we're going to go to window transparency and choose multiply. And you'll see that it's kind of see through now. So now I'm going to select on this white piece. And then in this transparency, I'm going to change it to 80%. So that it's kind of see-through. So in the layers menu, as you can see, all of this is kind of looking good. I'm going to go ahead and collapse it again, make sure it's good, lock it, and I'm going to control and save. I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to call it box top. And I'm going to move it up above all these other ones. And of course, I'm assuming that this will be the box top since it says box top. With the type tool, I'm going to go right here, create a box. Your typeface is going to be ATC Pirate Heavy with a font size of 56 and the leading at 50. We're going to type in Alter, Enter, Wacky. That's what you should look like, just like this. Now here's where it's going to get tricky. You're going to go over here to your type tool, right click on it, and then click on the touch type tool. There are a lot of settings here. So when I click on the W, you'll see that there's a different ways I can adjust this. I can twist it. I can bring it big. I can make it larger. I'm going to show you a bunch of these steps right now. So if you click on this button here, it's going to make it very wide and that's okay. That's what we wanted to do. Now I'm going to bring it in by clicking this little tool here on the bottom. And then I'm just going to keep making this a little bit taller and wider until I kind of get it to the big W that I want it to be. So about here. Okay. Now what I need to do is I'm going to bring it in to about there. I'm going to put my, whoops, I'm going to change my tool back to my type tool. I'm going to put my Y or my line insertion here and I'm going to put some kerning points right there because I needed that K and that Y to be a little bit more separated. So it matches along the bottom. Now the top, I'm going to need them because you see that the A is covered. So to help that out at the top, I'm going to make those a little bit smaller. It's the only way I can get this to work. 
and it's a little wonky. I'm not a fan of how they set it up here. I wouldn't do it this way myself, but I'm trying to do the best we can. <laughs> so we're going to bring these down to about a negative 30, 32 ish. Whoops, at the top, 32 ish for each of these. And you'll see that the A is slowly starting to move out from underneath that. Now I might need to do it a little bit more just to make sure that it does do correctly. So I might have to bring it to like a negative 40. I would do it a little bit differently, but to do the next step that we got to do, it's not going to let me do that. So we're going to do the best with what we have. And I'm going to put some kerning on the back side of that Y as well to make it move a little bit further away. And then I'm going to bring my W. There we go. I kind of like that a little bit better. I tell you what, because we did that, I can actually bring these in a little bit more if I wanted to. I'm going to give that a little bit more space in there. But we're going to take this W, go back to that touch type, double click on it, and bring it in about there. Okay, so we're going to grab that. We're going to move it to make sure that it's in the center. Now I can bring the box in a little bit. That's usually what I typically do when I'm done adjusting. So it makes it a little bit easier to see where I'm in the center. We're going to control S to save it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to window, graphic style libraries, scribble effects. We're going to click on this top one here and see how it all falls into there. And that's exactly what I wanted to do. I want that to happen. We're going to create another typing box and this one we're going to change the font to we're going to go ahead when you have the box selected it'll change everything for you so we're going to go ahead and change this to ATC Coral Normal at the font size of 15 which it did not do normally it will maybe I'm in the wrong mindset today which would not be uncommon for me either and we're also going to change this to the pink. And this is going to say Candy Company. Again, I know I'm done typing. Make my box fit. And I'm going to bring that and put it down here. And I might, let me change that W a little bit. Because I don't really like how it's looking. So what I might do now is I might make the W a little bit bigger and bring it down to like, yeah, that's better. Something like that. Yep, I like that better. Okay. So I'm gonna select that, I'm gonna select that. And then I'm going to right click them and, well, I thought I was gonna group them here, but I guess I'll go to object and group. And that's done. So now we're gonna scroll down to the bottom box. We're going to go to our layers, create a new layer, go to box bottom. We're going to select the art group here. We're going to hit the alt and we're going to click on it and we're going to drag it to the bottom box. Now we're going to lock the top box and close that down. So now on the bottom box, since we're only working on that, now you'll see that there's a double layer. See that? So we're going to go ahead and drag that down to the bottom box. Center that up the best we can. So it looks something like that. And then I'm only going to select on the logo part here. And I'm going to stroke it with a one point and I'm going to stroke it out in white. Notice that I am still all together. So what's happening is that this is disappearing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo that. Now what I need to do is I'm going to double click on this so that it's only on that. 
and I'm going to stroke that. Okay. Notice that this is not being messed with now. It's only the logo piece itself. This will make it stand out or pop from the background. So when you double click on it, notice that across the top is standing out against the artwork. So now you can control save it. Okay. So now we're going to prepare this to be um, printed out, sent out, whatever it needs to be done. So what we're going to do now is you're going to go to click off of everything. You're going to hit effect and then document raster effect settings. Just checking everything, you know, depending on the printer, you want to make sure that you're CMYK, high resolution. Um, there's all sorts of different ones, but for printing, you always want to be in high resolution. Your background, of course, normally is going to be transparent. And then you have anti-aliasing and uh, clipping, all that fun things. And then, of course, reserve spot colors. And then you're going to say, OK. Now, to preserve the transparency flat, we're going to go to Window. And we're going to go to Flattener Preview. And a lot of the times, if nothing appears, we're going to hit the Refresh button. And you'll see kind of how it's going to pop up in the little preview. All affected objects. And then just say None so you can kind of see what it would look like. And see here, we're going to say All Affected Objects which would be this right here. These will all be affected by the transparency piece. And then if we hit transparency objects, this one, of course, because it has some transparency options. And then if we do the show options here, it'll show you all the different option menus that we actually can do. So we're just gonna hit refresh, say none, refresh, and then close that out. All right, so now we need to go ahead and hit, and we need to finish it out. So we're gonna hit save as. Of course, mine's gonna be in the work in progress folder right here. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna change this to a PDF. When you change it to a PDF, it's gonna save, and you're gonna get this preset here. Now, when this happens, you're gonna make sure that you choose the high quality print option up here and that you choose the hold on let me make sure I have the right one the the either the five or actually do the four acrobat acrobat four and then for the advanced here you're gonna change this to high resolution you're gonna save PDF and then you can close the file so then when you are done and you go in here, you can submit this one, which will be your PDF, and it'll look like this, and you will submit your AI file. I'll get both of those. And then that'll be it for us this week. Please let me know if you guys have any questions, and we'll go from there.